So let's talk a little bit about the blue bus through beam photo eyes that come with the operator. Again, these are a through beam device, transmitter and receiver. Both have to be wired back to the board where it says blue bus. So you can either connect wires separately from the transmitter back to the board and the receiver back to the board to the same two terminals marked blue bus. Or we can connect wires between the transmitter to the receiver or vice versa and then run just one pair of wires back to the board. Now the nice thing about a through beam photo eye is that it's going to be more reliable um, than a reflective photo eye. They're very reliable, um, less prone to falsing in, in sun glare or when it's rainy and foggy. Uh, they're just extremely reliable. Uh, obviously not quite as convenient maybe to install as a reflective photo eye, but where you have access to be able to wire these units, they're really going to be your best bet. And we can actually con connect up to six pairs of these to the same two terminals on the boards. So six pairs of photo eyes can be set up, and by changing the jumpers in these units, we can configure them to do different things. Uh, they can protect on the opening cycle of the gate, the closing cycle. So there's six different settings on these jumper settings here. And each pair, okay, transmitter to receiver, they have to match, the jumpers have to match, but every pair has to be different from the others. And that's how the board can tell the difference between this pair of photo eyes and subsequent pairs, okay? So we connect up to six pairs of these photo eyes to the same place on the board where it says blue bus, just a two wire connection to both the transmitter and the receiver. Set the jumpers and away we go. Real easy, very reliable. But again, they are through beam, so you do have to cross the driveway with a pair of wires if you're putting the photo eye across the driveway. Here on my test system, I have a larger set of EPMLB slash A photo eyes, but again, the same actual internal device, just a larger enclosure. And here again, as I explained, we have just two wires connected to the photo beam. This is the receiver. And then on this other side, I have my transmitter. And you can see that I actually ran the wires from the receiver over to the transmitter. And then I'm tying another pair of wires to the same two terminals. And I'm running that one pair of wires back to the board. So again, my wires from my receiver come to the transmitter, and now a pair of wires going back to the board. Or I could have wired them independently back to the board. Now at the 1050 board, I'm going to remove my connector that's on my blue bus input right there. I've already got my photo eyes pre-wired here. So again, I ran wires from my receiver over to my transmitter, and then a pair of wires back here. So just one pair of wires coming back to my photo eyes. And now, once I plug those in, we can actually see that on my photo eyes, I have a blinking light. When these photo eyes are aligned and working properly, we should be getting one blink per second from both the transmitter and the receiver. So right now you see that they're blinking three blinks and then a pause, three blinks and then a pause, and that's because the board has not configured to these photo eyes or has not configured the photo eyes to the board yet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come into our board. We're going to press functions. We're now in the learn mode. Press OK. We're going to select swing or slide. In this case, I'm programming it as a swing and press OK. And select average or light or heavy and press OK. At this point now, I would connect my motor, adjust my limits. I've already done that on this system. And, uh, and now if I'm ready to, to learn the system, I'm going to go ahead and just open the gate a little bit. And I'm going to press OK. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to scan the blue bus. So it's looking for my monitored entrapment device. And it's setting up these photo eyes. And once it's established that the photo eyes are working, now the learning process can begin. If I didn't have these photo eyes hooked up, the learning process would have stopped and it would have told, given me a blue bus error and told me that at least one monitored safety device would have been required. So now if we look at our photo eyes, we can see that we're getting one blink per second, a good, slow, steady one blink per second. And what that means is that these eyes are configured to one another, they're looking at each other, 
and they're properly aligned. So there's the transmitter blinking once per second. And now I'm going to pan over here to my receiver. And there we see the receiver blinking once per second. And we see that our board is going ahead and going through the learning process. And I'm up and ready to go. Now again, the blinking on the photo eyes tells you exactly what's going on with them. So one blink per second means that they're talking to one another and that they're properly aligned. If one of them were blinking a little more rapidly, it would mean that the alignment isn't quite what it should be. If one of them was steady on while the other one was blinking, it means that they're not aligned at all or something's breaking the beam. And again, three blinks per second means that there's either uh, the board hasn't configured the photo eyes to the board yet, or that there's a wiring issue or a jumper setting that the board can't configure the photo eyes to the board. So again, it's just a simple matter of wiring, running wires from the transmitter and the receiver either to one another and then one pair of wires back to the board or separate wires from each back to the board and then putting the board in learn mode, letting the board find the photo eyes, running through a learning process and now you see our gate operators ready to work. The 936 board is exactly the same thing. So you see here, I've got an E1 error message showing, and that E1 error message tells me that my required monitor devices have not been found on this board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just unplug my monitor and photo eyes from my 1050 board, and same exact wiring, right-hand side of the board, I'm going to plug those same photo eyes into my 936 board, and now what I'm going to do is just power the board down, let it completely power down. Now when I power it back up, the first thing the 936 board does is it looks for the required monitoring devices. And if it finds them, and if it's the same monitoring devices they had on it previously, and they're configured the same, the board will be ready to work. In this case, they're set up differently, and so it still gave me an E1 error message. All I have to do is press and release the learn button, and now it will rescan the blue bus input, It'll reconfigure the photo eyes to this board now. And in just a moment, it'll give us two dashed lines, meaning that the monitoring requirement has been met and we're ready to proceed with this board. Again, we can proceed with our learning process and we'll be functional. So that's how easy it is with the Blue Bus through beam photo eyes.